Welcome back to uh, part two of uh, paper three. Now, quite often when we get to the staples, there we go, halfway through the paper, people tend to sort of give up a bit. But actually, there's a lot of marks for these questions and it's not necessarily about getting them all right. It's about picking up as many marks as you can. And that can be the difference between one or two grades, just having a go and wrestling with every question. So here's question 18. It's not actually that tricky. She paid, She bought a ring in the USA. She paid 345 US dollars. Work out in pounds the amount Rosie paid for the ring. So I want to know um, what 345 US dollars is in pounds. So I kind of want to know how many pounds one dollar is. But it's not easy to go at, at one on here. So instead of that, I'm going to, I could go, to, I'm going to go for a bit where I can see the line going exactly through a corner. And I see that here. So I'm going to go across. And that is, there's five divisions making up 10. So it must be two for each one, 22, 24, 26 dollars. Equals 20 pounds. So if I want to know what number I multiply, there's slightly less pounds for each dollar. So if I want to know how many pounds each dollar is, I need to divide by this number, divide by 26. It's ratio in sort of real life. So if I get my calculator, it's not going to be a very nice number, but that doesn't matter because the calculator is going to handle that for me. And I do 20 divided by 26, I'm going to get 10 over 13, which is S to D, that nasty number. So let's just keep it at 10 thirteenths. So $1 is equal to 10 thirteenths of a pound, which is hmm, 77 pence almost. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do 345 times that 0 0.8 or that 10 thirteenths. If I do 345 times 10 over 13, it gives me that. Now I press S to D. I'm going to write that down, but there's no, no real need. Press S to D and it's giving me 265 0.384. Now I've written a third decimal place in there because money is always done to the nearest hundredth. So I want that much. So it's 265 pounds. And because that's a four, that means that the eight is going to round down and stay at 38. So 265 pounds, 38. Here's the first part of a two-part, there's two marks for each part of this question, so two marks for this, give it a go. Right, so I know that 56 tuna sandwiches were sold, and I know that 40% of the total, this was 40% of all of them. So 40% equals of all of it, um, now, if I want 40% of something, I do 0.4 times this total number of sandwiches. I'm going to call that N. 0.4 times N would give me 56. So if you want to know 40% of something, you times it by 0.4. So 0.4 of something that we don't know is 56. I'm going to solve that little equation by reversing timesing by 0.4. So divide by 0.4. 56 divided by 0 0.4 equals 140. Now you can double check that that's true by working out what 40% of 140 is or what 10% is, is 14. 14 times 4 is 56, so I know I'm right. So that's part A. Part B, of the 56 tuna sandwiches sold, 18 was sold on Friday. Write 18 as a percentage of 56, give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. 
Now, all of this stuff about the sandwiches is irrelevant. It just wants to know what 18 is as a percentage of 56. Now, a percentage is just a fraction that's been multiplied by 100 to make it look nicer. So that's what you need to put in your calculator, just that. 18 over 56. So if you put in 18 over 56 and written that down, you get one mark. And then all you need to do is times it by 100 and that gives us 32.14 now I just want to the nearest whole number so I'm looking at the 32 1 means it stays down so it's 32 percent here's another four marker um, Pause the video, take your time, see what you can do. Right, so Actar has 30, 65, Ben has 100, Carl has three £5 notes, one £20 note and some £10 notes. This is all to do with how much money people have got. So I'm going to, um, the mean amount of money per person is 80. Well, there's three people and the mean is worked out by adding up the total divided by how many you've got, which is three, and that's giving us 80. So the total that money that they've all got must be 80 times three, which is 240 pounds. Now, Actar, if we take Actar and Ben together, have 165 pounds. So I'm gonna take that 165 away 240. I'm not going to wait, strain my brain. I'm just going to use my calculator. And that says £75. Carl has £75. He's got three £5 notes, which is 15, plus 20. That's 35. So if we take the 35 away, the £40 must be in £10 notes. The question asks how many 10 pound notes, well four tens are 40, so it equals four for your final answer. Okay, Malik is gonna throw a fair coin 50 times. Two one mark questions here on probability. So an estimate for the number of time the coins will land, well it's 50-50, isn't it? So 50 divided by two, is going to give me that, it just says write down, so it's one mark for 25, it's the only answer that makes sense. Paula and Simon are going to try to find out if a different coin is biased. Paula throws it three, ten times, records the number of times it lands on heads. Simon does it a hundred times. Whose results will be more useful? Well, Simon, but you don't get the mark just for saying Simon, because you need a reason, because he has done more trials. The more trials you do, the closer you're likely to get to the real probability. That's all you need. Here's another little two marker. Some people really like these and just find them easy. Uh, other people struggle a bit more. So um, I'll read it out just in case you can't see because it's a bit small. Here's a solid made from a square base pyramid and a cube. Each edge of the solid has length six centimetres. On the centimetre grid, draw the plan of this solid. So the plan is just the footprint that it makes on the ground. The footprint it makes on the ground is just a square. And that square is length six centimetres. So if that's the case, all we need is a square but having said that, um, the footprint it makes is, is one interpretation of it, but it's also sometimes called the bird's eye view. And that's what we're looking for here. If it was architects, they'd have a floor plan, which would just look like this. They'd also have a roof plan to tell builders what it should be looking like from above. And the roof plan, because it's coming to a point there, is going to mean that we have Diagonals crossing 
there. Now, I should have done it in pencil, really, but um, there you go. Right, a three part, but five marks altogether. Two marks for this final part. Have a go at this algebra stuff. So n cubed means n times n times n, and n to the five means that five times. Do it all together, it's going to give you three plus five makes eight of them in a row. So that simplified is simply n to the power eight. Now this means this all divided by that. C to the power three divided by C squared. Three take When you're dividing by powers, you can take the powers effectively. So that's going to give me um, just C on the top. But D to the power four divided by D is just going to take one of those four out there. So that'll be D cubed. And we've got just um, one left on the bottom. Dividing by one stays the same. So your final answer should be C D cubed or D to the power of three. Last one here. This is just like an equation, but it's called an inequality. They rate it a grade more difficult just because it's got that symbol. Ignore the symbol. This means 5x divided by 2. So we want to get rid of that divided by 2, which we can do by multiplying by 2. So that means that that'll just become 5x. 7 times 2 is 14. Now we want to know what x is, or to be more exact, what x is bigger than, because that's what this symbol means. So multi opposite of multiplying by 5, divide by 5. So x is going to be bigger than, do you know what, if you left it as 14 over 5, they would still give you full marks. But we should probably just do 14 divided by 5 to give us 2.8. So our final answer is going to be x is bigger than 2.8. But either of those are two marks. Here's a three mark question. Take your time to work out how long Andy takes. Draw a little diagram if you like. So he cycles a distance of 30 kilometers at an average speed of 24 kilometers an hour. We want to know the time. Now speed equals distance is kilometers. The units actually tell you the formula for speed. Distance divided by, well, the hours, hours is a measure of time, isn't it? And we want to know um, how long this is all going to take. So these can be interchanged. If I times by speed time and then divide by speed, you get time equals distance divided by speed. Some people like to use a formula triangle. Now we're told not to really teach this anymore but it, it works and there's no massive reason why you shouldn't with distance on the top and speed times time on the bottom and whichever one you want you cover up. So I want time it's distance divided by speed. If I wanted distance it's speed times time. If I wanted speed it's distance divided by time. So we want uh, time so that's distance so for the first part, it's the distance um, is 30 kilometers at a speed of 24 kmh. And if you do 30 over 24 in your calculator, you get five quarters. So let's just leave it as that for now. Five quarters of an hour or an hour and a quarter. Part two is going to be 12 kilometers at a speed of eight kilometers an hour. Well, 12 divided by eight is three over two hours. So the total time is going to be five quarters plus three over two. Well, we can do this in here. In fact, I've already got three over two. If I press plus, you see it says answer. That means it's using the answer that we just had. Five over four equals, and it's telling me 11 over four. If I press S to D, that is 2.75 hours. But you can't have 75 minutes in an hour, do you? We know that that's 
two and three quarter hours, don't we? Now it wants the answer in hours and minutes. So a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes, three quarters of an hour is 45 minutes. Here's a sneaky little grade five question coming up now, but give it a go. It's worth having a guess, whatever. It says a number has been rounded to one decimal place. The result is 9.4. Complete the error interval. What we want to know, therefore, if you're, is at what point would you round down or round up to 9.4? So we're looking at the next numbers up and above would be 9.3 and 9.5. Notice here it says bigger than or equal to. You know we round up on 9.35, don't we? That is the smallest number that you could possibly have. If it was 9.349 or something, 9.34 would round down to 9.3. So we want 9.35 there. And then it says smaller than. So the point at which at 9.45 would round up to 9.5, wouldn't it? But 9.4499999 round down to 9.4 so we need to put 9.45 because we've got no idea how many nines someone might decide they could always have another one couldn't they so 9.45 would be fine and in fact there is an alternative if you put 9.49 recurring you still get full marks two marks for it one for that one one for that exactly as you see there Question six, four marks for this question. Take your time. Do it one bit at a time. Has Maisie got enough grass seed to make a to, to make a lawn 10 metres by 14? She knows that three kilograms make a lawn five by nine. It's sold in two. She has two kilogram boxes. She has five boxes of grass seed. So five times two equals 10 kilograms of seed. Now, if three kilograms makes a rectangular lawn five meters by nine, what is the area? Area is length times width, so five times nine equals 45. So what that means is three kilograms makes 45 square meters. So I need to know how much one kilogram is before I know what 10 kilograms can do. If I divide by three, one kilogram is going to seed 45 divided by three is 15 square meters. She's got 10 kilograms. So if we multiply by 10, 10 kilograms must be enough for 150 square meters. The lawn she's got is 10 metres by 14 metres. 10 times 14 equals 140 square metres. She has 150 square metres. So then you can say, yes, she has enough. And if you want to show off, you can say, and she has enough. For another 10 square meters of lawn beyond that. Now that's not totally the end of the question because there's then another question. Maisie opens the five boxes of grass seed. Have a little look at this. Even if you get lost on what happened on part A you can still get a mark here. Right she finds that four of the boxes contain two kilograms so that is eight kilograms plus one is nine kilograms so does this affect she's only got nine kilograms instead of um ten and in fact nine times what was it it was 15 per kilogram wasn't it is 135 square meters does this affect whether she has yes she only has enough for 135 square meters um, but as long as you say yes it does because she doesn't have as much um, seed you should still get a mark
Right, here's a sizable probability tree diagram question. Four marks. I'll read it quickly in case you can't read it all. You've got two spinners with one, two, three on both of them. They're both fair sided. Complete the probability tree diagram for whether or not it lands on a two or not on both spinners. And then work out the probability that spinner A lands on two, but spinner B does not. So it's a one in three chance that it lands on a two and two thirds that it doesn't. And it's the same for spinner B. So for putting all of those in, you get two marks and you haven't worked anything out. Work out the probability it lands on a two, but B doesn't. That is going along here and down here, isn't it? And those two, you add between to make them always add up to one but when you go along here you multiply along the branches so it'll be one third times two thirds and you can put that into your calculator and it will give you um, two ninths because you times the top numbers and the bottom numbers when you're multiplying question 28 looks difficult isn't really Using the graph to solve the simultaneous equations, it wants a value of x and a value of y. What it means by solving is what value of x and y works for both equations. Well, this equation is given by this line, they've done it for you. This one by this line, where they cross is the only point at which your x value and your y value are the same. So the x value there is negative 2. And then going up the stairs, your y value, your y coordinate is 4. Part B is a little trickier because it, it just gives you this curve y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. It says find estimates for the solutions. Well they're known as the roots. The solutions are what value of x will make y 0. Can you see the difference there? You've got 0 and you've got y. So when is y 0? It's 0 there and it's 0 there. So the solutions will be, well, it goes through at, at 0 0.6 there. So x equals 0 0.6 and x equals 1, 2, 3, 3.4 are your two marks on that bit. Right, we've finally reached the final question of the paper, 29 for three marks. The prism is made from wood with a density of 0.8 grams per centimetre cubed. So density equals grams. What do grams do? Grams measure mass, don't they? Mass, how heavy something is, divided by cm cubed. What's that? That's volume. So that means that we know that density equals mass divided by volume and you can actually have you can make yourself another formula triangle for mass over d times v we want the mass so that means it's going to be density times volume so the mass is going to equal the density times the volume we know that the density is 0.8 grams per centimeter cubed we've got centimeters all here so um, so we need to know what the volume is and then times it by 0 0.8 right now the volume of a cuboid is length times width times height the volume of any prism is the cross-sectional area multiplied by the depth anytime i cut through this shape i would get that same cross-sectional shape wouldn't I? so i work out that area and I times it by the depth. So the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, or base times perpendicular height, which just means where you've got 90 degrees. We've got 90 degrees there. So area is going to be six times four divided by two. Put that into your calculator and you should get 12 centimeters squared. The volume is going to be 12 times the depth which is 10 giving us 120 centimeters cubed 
So now for the mass, all we need to do is 0 0.8 times that volume of 120. Put that into the calculator. And that should give you 96. And what are the units? They're grams. So 96 grams. And that's it. Well, I hope that went well for you folks. Always a good idea, maybe in a month's time, to go back and do the same papers again. That way you will practice the skills. Um, and yeah, you'll get a little bit better and that'll feel better as well. Okay, cheerio then.